I wish I had a good joke, but I don't, so we're just gonna we're just gonna dive in. Sound good? People are chuckling at me. All right. So tonight, like pastors have said, we're starting a new series. Uh, you, I have titled it "Divine Healing." Divine Healing. Uh, it could be called Christ the Healer. Uh, but divine healing. We're going to talk about, and we are going to, um, uh, what's, define, define what divine healing is tonight. Are you excited to get into God's Word? I'm going to reiterate one time, just one time, what Pastor Evans said. I cannot emphasize this enough. And if crying and pleading with you that's a ridiculous thing to say, but would get you to do it, I would do it. There is, I, there just is no substitute, no substitute when we are sitting under the Word of God uh, for, like she said, having our eyes on it and writing it down. Because our goal is that we want that Word to get in us. Right? Right? Amen. Amen. And, and so uh, we want to be not only hearers of the word, but doers of the word. And just taking notes isn't really going to uh, arrive us at where we want to be. But taking the notes, writing out the scriptures and meditating on them will arrive us at where we want to be. Amen. Amen. So divine healing. I'm, uh, like I said, I'm very excited uh, to uh, just to be teaching, um, teaching, listening to. Uh, I told pastors I've been in healing school for a couple of years now, and uh, thank God, thank God, thank God, His Word works. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. And, and truly, healing, the healing benefit, the healing benefit the healing gift that the Lord Jesus Christ purchased for us should be something that we feed on every single day. Say every day. Amen. Something we should feed on every single day. Why is that? Because we live in um, a sin filled world. We live in a dirty world. We live in a world where our enemy is still at large and he will come and try to offer us things that do not belong to us. And if we don't have the word of God deep down on the inside of us to know how to answer those things when they come, then something that God never meant to take us out will take us out. Amen. Amen. So every day, Every day we feed. Every day we feed on God's healing word. Amen. Uh, so let's pray. And then we're going to just get right into it. Father, I thank you for this night. I thank you that your word is life unto us. We are asking you for the spirit of wisdom and revelation to flood the eyes of our heart with light in the knowledge of who you are. And we thank you for it, Father. <clears throat> we thank you for uh, an open door. We thank you for divine utterance. We thank you for the great teacher of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Lord, for light. We thank you for light tonight, light and words from heaven that will truly set men free. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. Amen. So I'd like you to turn in your Bibles to Isaiah 53, and we are actually going to start right there. Uh, Brad, if you want to go ahead and play this, uh, it's about a two-minute clip. Isaiah 53, verse 4 and 5 tell us, Surely he had borne our griefs, our sicknesses, and our diseases. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. As a young man in my 30s, I stood in a local church, along with other ushers ready to receive communion. Standing there, I told the Lord, I don't really understand what communion's all about. And 
and all at once the roof of that church disappeared and I saw a vision and I saw Jesus hanging on the cross and then I saw the words of sickness and disease fly through the air each one striking him. I saw the words of cancer, tuberculosis, arthritis, and other diseases fly through the air. I saw words of disease that I recognized and words I didn't recognize. The words came slower at first, then they began to come faster and faster. As each struck him, his whole body jolted and was jarred. I was seeing every sickness and disease being laid on him, and each word struck him, and I saw what the prophet Isaiah saw. He was marred more than any man. He didn't even resemble a man anymore. On him was laid every sickness and disease. As Matthew 8, 17 tells us, himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Where did he take them? He took them away, away from you and me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I wanted to play uh, just that quick uh, clip. Uh, Isaiah 53, uh, 4 and 5 is a huge redemptive verse. Let's read it again. Are you looking at it? In the Amplified, it reads, Surely he has borne our griefs. That word griefs uh, in the Hebrew is actually translated sickness. Okay? Look, you can look it up. I encourage you to look it up. Surely he has borne our griefs, our sicknesses, our weaknesses, and distresses. How many of you know, I mean, it's something that we really don't say very often. I don't anyway, born, the word born. How many of you really don't know what that word means? Oh, just me. Excellent. Excellent. So I'm going to read it anyway. Born means to lift up, to bear away. Thank you, Lord. To lift up, to bear away, to convey, or to remove at a distance. So something that was there was lifted up and moved away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Surely, surely, Isaiah says, he has borne our griefs, our sicknesses, weaknesses, and distresses, and carried our sorrows and pains of punishment. Yet we ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God as with leprosy. Verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him, and with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. So just as in this verse, just as God himself, and I'm not going to read the whole chapter, you guys, uh, that's some homework for you. Read the whole chapter. Read it. Read it more than once. Uh, But just as the sins, just as your sins and just as my sins were laid upon Jesus and he shed his blood to do what with them? And he shed his blood to do what with your sins? To wash them away, to take them away. Amen? Amen. And so this scripture tells us that in the very same way that uh, the uh, verse in Psalms where, where it says that he's removed our transgressions from us as far as the east is from the west. So if Jesus is our Lord, our sins are uh, blood washed. They are no longer there. They no longer belong to us. If Jesus took them and washed them away, they no longer belong to us. Amen? And so this same verse tells us that in the same act of redemption that God laid all of sickness and all of disease. The only reason that sickness and disease came into the world is because man sinned. It's part of the curse of the law. And God perfectly and completely dealt with the sin problem. Through our great substitute and the shedding of his blood. Hallelujah. So the curse was laid upon Jesus. And that same blood out of the wounds upon his back that he took for us. Lifted lifted up and took away all of our sickness and our disease. Amen. 
Amen. And um, I told pastors tonight, I said, I feel like I'm going to kind of brush with a broad stroke uh, tonight, but we are going to be at this for weeks, and it's going to be line upon line and precept upon precept because we want this to be a living word on the inside of us. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> to know the will and the ways of God regarding healing. That, uh, several weeks ago, I taught a message and talked about the will and the ways of God. And how many of you know that it is important uh, if we are going to, if we're going to walk in victory, if we're going to walk in all that uh, God the Father uh, supplied for us through the Lord Jesus, then we need to have his word on it. We have to know what his word says. And we need to know the ways. You know, it's not just because sometimes a lot of, a lot of times it happens that we hear the message that, that Jesus is our healer and that he bore our sicknesses away and we think we've got it. We think that it's a one and done uh, sort of thing. But the Bible tells us we need to know the ways of God. We need to know how to receive. Amen. And, 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 to, and to release our faith and to walk in it, we need to know how to hang on to it when the enemy comes to try to snatch that healing word out of our hearts. We, we, need to be, we need to be trained and we need to be equipped and we need to be hearing over and over and, and over again. Amen. And I really do believe, I believe, I, growing up and growing in the things of God, and I'm still growing up, aren't you so thankful that we never arrive? You know, but I look back and I can remember, <clears throat> I can remember hearing this good word, the good news, and, uh, and I didn't have much root you know what I'm saying? There wasn't much root in me. And so when I didn't see immediate results, this sounds a lot like Mark 4 and, and, and the parable of the sower. But when I did not see immediate results, then I got discouraged and I backed away because that was the enemy's plan to come after and to steal the word that had been planted. And so we need to grow in these things to not only know what the will of God is, but the ways of God. That's why I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful for church. I'm so thankful for Sunday mornings. I'm so thankful for Wednesday nights because we get the good word of God. And you know what? None of us, none of us have arrived yet. And the number of times, <clears throat> excuse me just a minute, the number of times that I have sat and uh, through the preaching of the word, answers came. From the preaching of the word, correction came. From the preaching of the word, uh, direction came to my life. From, from the preaching of the word, eternal deposits I received into my heart that changed the course of my life. Can y'all relate? Amen. Amen. And so this is something that we will never, ever, ever outgrow. I'm kind of ahead a on my notes here, but, but so many times we have viewed, let's take the topic of healing, since we're talking about healing tonight, we viewed healing as an event. Do you know what I'm saying? An event, like it's a one and done sort of thing, like we don't think about healing for our body until we need it. And so we're hoping that somehow we're, we're wanting to receive healing, but we really don't know how to receive healing but because we're treating it like an event instead of a lifestyle of walking with the Lord, amen, and, and a lifestyle of, of meditating on His Word, releasing the Word out of our lives uh, with faith through the confession of our mouth. Are you following me? So no message and no word is a one-and-done situation, ever. 
We're continually, continually growing. And there's just things. There are things that I don't know. I sit in that chair when pastor is preaching, Pastor Evan or, or whomever, and I've come and I've said, Lord, I need answers. I need answers. There's things that... There's things that I don't understand that I see your word on this, but I know that I don't have uh, all the light that is necessary for me to release faith in that word, and I need answers. And so uh, what we have on the wall, our expectation is an invitation for God to move. And when we come in and we say, Lord, I need answers, I'm telling you, God is faithful through the preaching of the word to bring us answers. Amen. I'm trying to stay on my notes and not doing very good. Um, <clears throat> so receiving healing for our bodies is not hard. Say it's not hard. But you know what? Uh, it's been made hard through wrong teaching or bad teaching or experiences. D do you know what I mean? Uh, it, but through the preaching of the word and when truth comes, then we know and we realize it's not hard. It's not hard to receive healing. Say, it's not hard. Amen. We receive healing the exact same way we receive Jesus as Lord. We receive healing for our bodies the exact same way that we receive Jesus as our Lord. We believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth. Same way. Same way. Hallelujah. We have to know it. We have to know it. We have to know what God's will is concerning healing. We have to know that healing is for us today, right now. Right now, we have to receive it just like we had to receive Jesus as our Lord. Nobody received Jesus as his Lord because it was God's will. I should say something else after that, right? We received Jesus as Lord because we called on him. Amen. It's God's will to save everybody. But none of us... Uh, got born again just because it was God's will. We had to call upon him as our Lord and Savior. Is that right? Why would we think it's any different about anything that God has provided for us through the redemption of the Lord Jesus Christ? Why would we think that it's any different and yet a whole doctrine has been made up of if it be thy will? Amen. So we need to know what God's will is. Amen? Amen. We need to know it, and we must receive it. Amen. Let's turn to Matthew uh, 16. Matthew 16, a very familiar uh, passage of Scripture. We're going to start in verse 13. Now, when Jesus went to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they answered, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you yourselves say that the Son of Man is? And they answered, Oh, I'm sorry. He said, Oh, sorry, 16. Woo! Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Then Jesus answered him, Blessed, happy, fortunate, and to be envied are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood men have not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Jesus asked them the question, But who do you say that I am? I'm going to say it again, that the only reason you are born again today is because you said Jesus is Lord. Amen. And in the very same way that we would receive and lay hold of healing for our body is to say, Jesus, you are my healer. Amen. We call him healer. It, it matters what we call him. Amen. It matters what we call him. Amen. And then we have to enforce it. I'm spitting everywhere. 
We have to enforce it. We have to live a lifestyle of faith, not visit faith. We have to enforce it. We have to live a lifestyle of faith. I've said this many, many times, but if we are not feeding on God's word, if we are not, because the whole idea is to get uh, his word in us, that we meditated on it day and night, right? We don't let it leave our eyes. We keep it in the center of our heart, and we keep it in our mouth because we want it living in in our hearts that it becomes part of us. It's very difficult to play catch up. When a storm, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm not saying that God has left you. I'm not saying it's impossible at all. But the assault on our minds that comes from the enemy when we are in the middle of a storm or an attack going on, it's very difficult more difficult to play catch up during that time. Do you know what I mean? Amen. Amen. So we want his word to be a steady diet, his healing word to be a steady diet in our lives, that it's living on the inside of us. All right. So to to define divine healing, Uh, and we purposely called it divine healing, Medical science aids healing through physical means by administering medicine into the physical body. Right? God's divine healing is spiritual. It is administered through the human spirit. Amen. I'm going to read this again. Medical science aids healing through physical means by administering medicine into the physical body. God's divine healing is spiritual. It is administered through the human spirit. Hallelujah. So <clears throat> we're going to continue talking, talking about that. I'm going to move on in my notes here. But divine healing is not natural healing. And some people have tried to call it that. Well, yeah, you know, God's healing because he made our bodies to, he made our bodies to heal. You know, when we have a cut... Dr. Zach isn't here, is he? He might laugh at, my, um, at, at, at this because uh, obviously I am not a doctor. Uh, but when we have a cut, you know, God made it for our bodies to heal itself. Is that right? For, for healing to come. And, uh, and it seems that when there is an injury that the blood, that our blood rushes there uh, and causes the healing process to begin. Isn't it interesting that our natural healing is aided by blood? Divine healing is not natural healing. Divine healing is not applied from the outside in. Meaning from medicine we take or from treatments from a doctor. Now don't you dare leave this room and say that I said anything that doctors are not good. I did not say that and I will not say that. Thank God for doctors. The wisdom that doctors have didn't come from them. They came from God. And God wants people well. God does not like suffering. He does not like suffering. And so we thank God for medical science and we thank God for doctors. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. But divine healing is not applied from the outside. All right. Again, medical science aids healing through physical means by administering medicine and treatment to the physical body. Divine healing is received and applied. Divine healing is received and applied from the inside out. From the inside out. Um, I remember as a young child, born again, I was born again when I was nine years old, um, but just trying to reconcile the difference. I grew up in a denominational church. I thank God for that church. Uh, It taught me well that Jesus died for my sins. I walked the aisle of that church and gave my heart to the Lord when I was nine years old. I thank God for that church. Amen. Um, I did not get taught that there was any other benefits of salvation other than being born again, okay? 
And so I just remember I can see myself actually sitting on a bicycle in my neighborhood. <laughs> uh, very, very interesting. And just trying to reconcile uh, this this thing going on <clears throat> in my in my head, but how many of you know? Pastor said at uh, the the baptism the other night when little Ruby was being baptized that there's no junior Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah! There is no junior Holy Spirit, and that the Spirit of God bears witness, right? That we are children of God. Hallelujah! And so the Spirit of God was talking to me. I didn't realize that. You know, uh, I wasn't taught that. But I did, I was trying to reconcile within my, within my thinking this idea that God had one will for me when I got to heaven, but another will for me here on earth. And it just, it didn't make sense to me. You know what I mean? It didn't make sense to me. Yet, you know, just because I had those thoughts and just because the Spirit was drawing me, do you know it was many years later before I came into some knowledge? I still had to have knowledge. I still had to... God does not work apart from His Word. No matter how precious the little kid is. No matter how precious, you understand, he doesn't work apart from his word. So I needed some knowledge that indeed God didn't have a separate will for me. One in heaven and one on earth. One on earth where I'm going to heaven someday, but aid and assistance from him and the thought of being able to be healed or him providing for me or, or restoration or joy or peace and those sort of things, those were not a part of my daily uh, feeding when I was a child. We still need knowledge. Amen. Amen. Uh, this um, statement from John G. Lake, who was a missionary, and I'm sorry, I don't have, I don't know the dates, a long time ago, do y'all? Long time ago, yeah. Uh, I will say that Pastor Evan and myself were born on his birthday, so just a side note there. Uh, but he made this statement, he said, when I saw for the first time by the word of God that sickness was not the will of God, everything in my nature rose up to defeat the will of the devil. Amen. Amen. When we see for the first time that sickness and disease and lack and poverty and depression it is not the will of God for our lives, then everything on the inside of our born-again spirit man rises up to resist it and to defeat it in our lives. Glory to God. We need His Word. We need His Word. And I will tell you this. Uh, Jesus has never appeared to me, ever. I've never had a vision. I've never had an angel appear to me. Every miracle that I've received, every prayer answered, and every bit of spiritual progress made in my life. Now, I'm not saying me, 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 me. God used people to get these things to me. You understand. But it's happened one way, and that is by receiving and acting on God's Word. By receiving and acting on God's Word. Amen. Amen. John 8, 32 says, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Do we need to know something? We need to know the truth. What is the truth? The Word. God's Word is the truth. We must not be a people that, uh, that take truth on into ourselves because of grandma or grandpa or from some other teaching or from some experience. We get mighty, 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 mighty messed up. When we're basing, on, when we're basing truth on experience or someone else's experience, amen. The truth. God's Word. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except by me. God said, uh, Jesus said, I am the truth. Jesus and his word are one. 
So we don't want to be patty caking around in life, assuming that we know what the truth is if we have not had our nose and our heart and everything within us married to this right here. Married to this right here. There's no truth apart from this. There is no truth apart from this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we will know the truth. We shall know the truth. And the truth will make us free. We don't have to get free. We don't have to do the heavy lifting. We don't have to do the work. The truth will make us free when we know the truth. Amen. And I'm not saying that we know it up here. I'm saying we know here. We know here. We know in our spirit, man, the truth will do the work. The word will do the work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we, we don't have to try and try and try and, and try to make it happen and try to make it happen. You shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. In the Passion, it says, if you embrace the truth, it will release true freedom into your lives. And the message says, then Jesus turned to the Jews who had claimed to believe in him. If you stick with this, living out what I tell you, you are my disciples for sure. Then you will experience for yourselves the truth, and the truth will free you. Amen. Amen. Um, so we had this, this statement, uh, pastor has said it a couple of times here, here recently. You, you remember the bracelets, the, what was it? W, W, J, D. What would Jesus do? You know, really? It's like he said, we've got to go to what did Jesus do? What did, we don't have to wonder. We, we don't have to wonder what did Jesus do, Right? And I see this in two realms. What did Jesus do? What did he do when he walked the earth in the Gospels? What do the Gospels tell us that Jesus did when he was walking on the earth? And then what did Jesus do as our substitute on the cross through his death, burial, and resurrection? What did he do for us? What did he do in us? We need to know and we need to live by what did Jesus do? Amen. <clears throat> One of the things Jesus did when he was on the earth was he revealed the Father to us. In seeing Jesus, we see the Father. In seeing what Jesus did, we see what God does because Jesus only did what he saw the Father do. Is that right? Jesus never did one thing uh, and the Father do the opposite. They are one. They always agree. John 5, 19. We may go a little fast here. John 5, 19. So Jesus answered them by saying, I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, the Son is able to do nothing of himself of his own accord, but he is able uh, to do only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does is what the Son does in the same way. All right? You know what? The Lord just corrected me while I was reading that. We're not going to rush through these scriptures. This is the very word. This is what we need to say, and this is what we need to hear. And rushing through the scripture for time's sake it is not what I'm going to do. All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Acts 10 38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Wouldn't it be a strange thing for Jesus to go about healing all who were oppressed of the devil? Uh, and it not be in God's will. We need to take God's will. We need, we need to let God tell us what his will is. And I know, I know, I know there's pushback. I know because of terrible teaching and because of experiences, I know I can hear thoughts, well, that's, yeah, that's not, that's not how we were taught or that's not how, how we believe because this, 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 and this. Uh, just, let, just let the word of God speak for itself. 
Amen. Just let the Word of God speak for itself. And I don't give a flying fig in space what someone's experience is or what my own experience is. That does not define the will of God in my life. And we must come to that determination. And there will be a fight your entire life. I'm going to tell you this. While we are in the world, in the presence of the enemy, while Satan is at large, there will be an assault on your mind bringing you different thoughts, offering you different thoughts than what the Word says. And this is why we've got to know what the Word says so that we can answer it when they come. And sometimes they come at a rapid Rate, rapid fire, and we've got to answer it every time. Every time we've got to answer it. Amen. Amen. Another thing Jesus did was he went about teaching, preaching, and healing all, say all, all, all who were sick. Matthew 9, uh, let's go there, please. Matthew 9 and verse 35. I do appreciate it being on screen, but I sure do love reading it out of my Bible. Matthew 9, 35 and 36 says, um, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. And Jesus went about all the cities and the villages. It says he went about teaching he went about preaching the gospel, and he went about healing every sickness and every disease among the people. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's listen. He went around, he 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 taught, he preached the gospel. Turn to Romans 1:16. I want us to look at this. He preached the gospel. Romans 1 uh, 16. Says, uh, and I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. He went about preaching the good news of the kingdom. Amen. He went about, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Preach Jesus. Preach Jesus. I'm not ashamed to preach Jesus. Because in preaching Jesus, it's the power of God unto something. Unto something. It's the power of God unto salvation. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Salvation. Uh, the strong gives these words and descriptions for salvation. Salvation, deliverance, health, preservation, safety, and this is one of my favorites. Deliverance from the molestation of enemies. Hallelujah. Salvation. And it's the gospel. It's the preaching of Jesus. It's the preaching of the gospel, which is the good news. It's the power of God unto salvation. We need some deliverance. We need some preservation. We need some health. We need some healing. We need some Jesus. We need to know and we need to understand who Jesus is and what he did for us. Glory to God. And you know what? We don't get it all in one sitting. We don't get it all in one lifetime. I'm telling you, we're, go we're going to be learning throughout all of eternity. We are. We're going to be learning throughout all of eternity. Stay on course, Mom. He healed all. Another thing that Jesus did, he healed all. I'm going to go through these quickly. Matthew 8, 16 through 17. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were oppressed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick, that it might be filled, fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities, and he bare our sicknesses. Hallelujah. Matthew 12, 15 says, And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. 
all. Luke 440. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with divers diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them. How many? Every one of them and healed them, Luke six nineteen. And all the multitude were seeking to touch him, for healing power was all the while going forth from him and curing them all, uh, saving them from severe illnesses or calamities. So some scriptures there that talks about uh, when Jesus walked on the earth and he healed all. He healed all. I'm going to stop right there and talk about some books um, You know, two more full pages of notes, but we're going to stop there uh, so that I can talk uh, about the books here. Um, But I do want to say this about Jesus, about Jesus healing all. Uh, And this we're actually going to get into next week, God's will to heal. But the Bible tells us that God never changes. That Jesus is the same yesterday today and forever. Amen? Amen. Acts tells us that he's no respecter of persons. If he healed one, his will is to heal all. 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 Amen. Amen. So, so if, if, you know, what we've heard tonight, if that is, if, if this may be new to you or if, or if you're thinking, man, I just, I need to know some more. You're right. All of us do. We need more. We need more. We need, we need more knowledge. We need more revelation knowledge, not head knowledge. We need more revelation knowledge. But that is never going to come apart from the preaching and the teaching of the Word. It's never going to come apart from, even in our own uh, uh, personal time, us sitting down uh, and spending time in His Word. Amen? Amen. So, um, again, next week we are going to be, we're going to begin about establishing God's will uh, to heal. But right now I do want to uh, talk about some books that we're going to say it would be a very good thing for you to have. How many of you are interested in feeding your spirit, man? And we want to be feeding on things of faith. Amen. Amen. It matters. Listen, it's a dangerous thing. Everybody listening? You know, used to you had to go somewhere. You had to go somewhere to get information to get screwed up. You know what I'm saying? But, But it's not that way anymore. It's at our fingertip. It's at our fingertip. Every voice in the world is at our fingertip. And we cannot be a people that lazily just clicks on any and everything. It's go- because if we do, it's going to cloud our spirit man. It, 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 it's going to cloud it in a way that cripples our walk of faith. So it's good to know uh, who to listen to, what to feed on. And some of the authors that I'm telling you right now, it's people that our pastors feed on. It's people that we feed on. It's people of the word and of faith. And it's what we um, recommend. Y'all good with that? Nobody's bucking up and saying, well, bless God, don't you tell me who I am to listen to and not listen to. This is part, I'm kind of putting words in his mouth right now, but this is part of the shepherd's office. To make sure that the sheep aren't going somewhere and eating crap that is going to hurt them. And and so if God's called you here to this body and under these pastors then they know the diet that you need to be feeding on. Amen. All right. So one of the books, this is a book by Nancy Dufresne, and it's called The Healer Divine. The Healer Divine. I'm going to tell you how to get it in just a moment, okay? But I want to read. I'm going to whet your appetite out of all three of these for just a moment. Is that okay? The message of divine healing is not the whole of the gospel, but it's a part, a very blessed part in the life of the believer. 
If you've struggled in the past to receive healing, may I suggest that you take your eyes off your body, cease all struggling, and instead fix your gaze on Him who paid the price for your healing. Fill up with the healing word and be a doer of that word, which cures all the ills of the spirit, soul, and body of man. We see in Proverbs that God's word is the medicine that he prescribes. Proverbs 4, 20 through 22. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life unto those that find them. And health, the Hebrew word for health in that verse is medicine. To all their flesh. The Bible said flesh. All right? Not healing to their spirit, healing to their flesh. We don't, our, our spirit doesn't get healed. You understand? We're either dead or we're alive. And when I say dead, I don't mean we cease to exist. Man is a spirit, we have a soul, and we live in a body. So we're either spiritually dead or we are spiritually alive when we are born again. Amen. Amen. So our spirit doesn't get healed. Our spirit doesn't get healed when we go to heaven. Our spirit is either alive unto God or it's dead, meaning it's separated from the life source. That's what spiritually dead means, separated from God, which is our life source. But that all changes when a person gives their heart to the Lord and they become born again and alive unto God. Amen. As we fill up with the healing word, meditating on it, thinking deeply into it, speaking it, building it into our spirit and holding our attention there, his word will do its divine work no matter what the condition or how advanced it may be. Amen. I'm so thankful for divine healing and for God's divine life within. It is most readily grasped by those who gaze and a whose gaze and attention are fixed on the Word and the healer divine. There were an innumerable amount of healings, miracles, and deliverances that took place during Jesus' earthly ministry. John states in John 21, 25, And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, every one, I suppose that even the world itself, could not contain the books that should be written. However, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, record only a small number of those healings because the writers of the New Testament wrote as they were moved upon by the Holy Ghost. Evidently contained in these recorded accounts of divine healing, we can learn everything we need to know about receiving healing and ministering healing to others. Each chapter in this book is a detailed study of those individual accounts of divine healing. I pray that this study will bring the healer divine into full view for you. So that was the introduction of this book. Now you can go, the ladies at the Connection Center uh, can help you with this uh, when you leave here, all right? But you can order this book. You, it's not on Amazon. Kindle part of this book, if any of y'all do the Kindle thing, is on Amazon. But you'll need to go to defrayingministries.org to order it. Now then, and it's $14 plus shipping, I will tell you this, if a number of you go out there and say, hey, I want this book, and if I place the order, uh, a, a bulk order from the church, then we will get a, a good size discount. But I won't place an order for just one or two, okay? So if, just keep that in mind if, if, if you're interested in that, okay? And then this, another book is Christ the Healer, F.F. F. Bosworth. How many of y'all have heard of this book? Okay, this is one that we have, uh, uh, that we can get on Amazon. Uh, it's going to be $11.50, I believe. If, if you don't have Amazon Prime, I'd be glad to order. We would be glad to order it for you and to get it here. I'm going to tell you this. I actually ordered three copies today, so if you're one of the first three that goes to the Connection Center, then you'll have yours on Sunday because it's going to be here on Friday. All right, I'm going to read just a couple of paragraphs from the introduction of this book. How the Father nature of God must long for man to return to the security and simple faith of pure fellowship with Him, taking His word as fact that can be fully trusted. Basically, the church has only one message. Oh. In all things, our Heavenly Father can be trusted to honor His word. 
Beyond just the message of divine healing, this book clearly presents the principles of faith in a way whereby every Christian can discover and possess through the benefits of Calvary all that Adam lost. It is to hungry, needy men and women everywhere that we present this new edition of Christ the Healer. It's a book you should have for your library, I'm just telling you. And then I'm going to tell you about this, uh, this book right here. This is Keith Moore's book. Anybody in here never heard of Keith Moore? So everybody has heard of, of Pastor Keith Moore. Uh, a tremendous source to feed upon, to read and, and to listen to. A man of the word, a man of the spirit, and a man of faith, all right? And so this is a book that he wrote. This is actually free. Everything that Pastor Keith does is free. Uh, let me tell you this also. This is a resource that, that not only is on his website, but we have it on our website as well under resources. So if you go to your app and you go to resources, you can pull this up. Now, you can see that I printed it out, and I've got it in a book, and we've used this book in healing classes that we've done uh, here before. But this book, what a treasure. I'm telling you what a treasure this is. And it is God's will to heal. 30 reasons we are sure it's God's will for all to be healed. Amen. Uh, and so I am. I'm going to read just a just a snippet out of here, and then I'm going to be I'm going to be done. Lord, help me find that snippet. Mm. All right. So this is in the introduction, and it says the Bible says that if everything Jesus said and did was recorded, not even the world itself could contain all the books that should be written. Oh, we just read that, didn't we? We have a very, very small amount of what he said and did recorded, and this amount was handpicked by God the Father, by the Holy Spirit, and manifested through his men. Why did he pen this? Because the word is a historical, um, because the word is a historical, accurate account, but it is much, much more than history. It is God speaking to all of mankind, revealing the will of God for everyone for all time. If the man's healing had just been for him, now uh, I started in the, middle, uh, in the middle of him talking about the leper that came to him, actually what we'll talk about next week when the leper said, Lord, I know you can if you will heal me, okay? If the man's healing had just been for him, it wouldn't have been in the Bible where you and I could read it and believe it today. The fact that it's there and that it's written and recorded in numerous places means we are supposed to take it how? When he said, I will, that's just not I will to that man on that day. This is the unchanging will of God for all men for all time. When he said, I will to him and had it recorded in the Bible, it's an I will to you and me. Why do we still have millions of people begging God to heal them if it would be his will? That's not good enough for them. They want something else. Well, how would you know it is God's will? They reply, when I'm healed. Do you mean when you see it, you'll believe it? Yes. It will be too late to believe it. It will be too late for faith. If you have to see it before you're going to believe it's his will, then you're refusing to have any faith. Faith believes it when it does not look like it's even possible simply because he said it. Glory to God. Do you want to close, Pastor? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your healing word. Glory to God. Amen. And, you know, um, can I see this one real quick? Um, you know, we say this, uh, this is something, there was a crazy thing that happened when, when you're at a youth camp. Um, and uh, we had a little girl that had a seizure uh, at 1 o'clock in the morning at IHOP. Um, and it was kind of like after a God service, you know, like just so cool, like just. And here we are in IHOP, and she goes into the bathroom. She has a seizure. Our ambulance is there. We got 60 kids, and it's just like it's late. It's tired. Everybody's like freaking out. And um, it was actually your first year at camp, wasn't it? Was that your first year? Yeah, I think that was our first year stepping into pastoring because we were. Anyway, I th it's right in there. Anyway, um, 
And I was, I, I, I was up till three o'clock in the morning and the next morning I was teaching at the camp. And, um, and so I was, I didn't go to sleep. And not only that, the next morning I needed to talk to these kids because how they perceived what was going on has a huge dip, has a huge, is a huge factor based on them receiving. And the Lord said this to me so clear. I remember where I was at, sitting in the parking lot, and he said, the enemy always comes with a question, but I always bring direction. And you look in the Word, and you can see that, the, like the, in, in Bible interpretation, or they call it hermeneutics, the law of first mention. Everything goes back to Genesis. In Genesis is everything, like every, in Genesis, the very beginning. He tells us the end from the beginning. And, and we see that but what, what did the enemy do? He brought a question. And so um, even as what we're doing right now and we're talking and we're teaching, the enemy would like to keep you and I questioning what is said so that we don't receive what he said. So there's something that is, is really powerful. Um, number one is 30 reasons why, okay? But they might not be your questions, right? And um, this book right here, um, at the end of this book is the new edition of uh, Christ the Healer. You might not, you might have an old one. I actually have one that was given to me for performing a wedding or doing a wedding um, that was written like 18 or 1904 or something like that. I'm talking the old, like it's a treasure to me. Um, but it was, and it was written, he said, uh, there's a lot of grammar, grammar uh, things that aren't right in here, but because of the demand, we got it out, you know? And so this, I have like an original, like just before editors, anything edition. And, um, but this one uh, is his son added to it, uh, both the testimony of who he was and his life, but also at the end, there's testimonies and testimonies and testimonies. One of the things that it answers here is it has 31 questions. So you have questions. This is what I just heard in my heart to just end with this. You have questions. Well, in here, there's some questions for you. Because sometimes we have a question about this. And, but, you know, if somebody said, well, here, let me put you on the stand. Tell me about this. And 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 then what about this? And well, what about this? And well, what about that? And what about that? All of a sudden you realize that the case that you thought you had built and, and the truth that you thought you held because of a question, you realize the whole time it was somebody told you something and you took that word as truth because of how, what you saw. And it, in, in staying in that place of question will rob you from being able to receive the truth. Oh my goodness, so good. And I, I, I wanted, I, I, when you were reading this, um, or when you were talking uh, tonight, I had this, this question. I was reading these questions, um, and I thought it was just, it was so good. He said, um, <laughs> Would not the argument commonly apply employed against divine healing draw from its failures <clears throat> if employed against justification, regeneration and the doctrine of salvation be, uh, be simply overwhelming? Here's what he said. Let me say it in a different way. If you use the same argument for God to heal, would it not stand up way would it not stand up if you use that same argument concerning salvation? Like, do you feel whole? I thought you were saved. Because I thought when you're saved, you're like, like but, but how come you act like hell? How come, how come my, in my life I'm seeing things? Like he's, he's saying, there's arguments that are so weak. Anyway, you go through these questions, and they're not as, as wordy as that where he nails out sanctify, like, and you just go, wow, whoa, oh, oh, can't answer that one. In other words, it's he proves through the argument of 31 questions, one for every day of the month, of when you wonder because of what you see, because of what you see, because of what you see, because of how you feel, question what? The Word of God. And that has always been why questions come, to question the Word of God and get you and I to go, not like this anymore, but go, well, 
and he'll just snatch that right out of you. And so this is why we're teaching this. Because when we go, when we leave this place, the message of the good news is that there's power unto salvation. And this is why we're talking about what we're talking about in, uh, in I Am. It was Jesus is God. Jesus is God, and who, and who is God? And we learned him first as Jehovah Jireh, the one who provides for himself. What? He provides for himself. And it's only mentioned one time in the word. What does he, what does he provide for himself? A lamb. It's never, Jehovah Jireh is that we sing songs about it thinking it's like all over in the Bible. It's not. It's one time because God only needed one time to provide for himself the lamb that provided everything else when we find out about the names of who he is as our healer, as our peace, as, as the, our shepherd, as our victory, as everything. It was all provided through one lamb. And that's where we're talking about. And we're starting it off with teaching on healing. This is foundational things. I actually sit in there just going, thank you, God, that we're still teaching the truth of your word where there's so much just, here, give you, let me give you a, a YouTube short. And you know what? It fall, you, fall, you fall short because you don't have something to actually hold. You just had something that was, well, that was a cool set and they had some cool lights and they had this edited and, and it stopped my scroll for a moment. But how about filling my heart with the truth of God's word so that I have something to stand on? This is why we're coming here. And this is why, like, seriously, it's, this message has to get out. It has to go out. It has to get out through the people of God and through this church. That's why we're here. And you're to, we're to carry this message with conviction, to boldly preach it. Because where there's boldness and authority, heaven they, it moves. The, the enemy moves. When the enemy doesn't, he said, Peter I know and Paul I know, but who are you? When you don't know who he is, you won't walk in the authority to, over the enemy and over spirit, the spirits of darkness in, in your life or in others' life. <sighs> Salvation was a finished work on the cross by Jesus. And all that you promise you see that can be yours if you say yes and amen. Not, I wonder, and what about? Anyway, so that's what we're doing. And so I, I, we don't really know how many weeks this is going to be for healing. She said three weeks. You saw that she didn't get through just this much of her notes. Not three weeks. Excuse me, not three weeks. She said seven or eight weeks. It might be longer than that. As you saw, she didn't get through. And we're not going to rush through this because this is important. This is a foundational thing. And I think that, that when we see the two things, we see that the blood and the body, or the, the blood and his body, he, the, those are the two main things. And these are the things that are attacked in Christianity. Your righteousness, which is by the blood of Jesus, so condemnation because you messed up, which your righteousness wasn't based upon your works, it was based on him. But then also, so because how I see what I did, what I feel. And then also healing. And so we're starting with this tonight, um, and we're going to be doing this for, for a while. So you can, if you miss a night, you can kick it back up. And, you know, if you have a friend that's not here that you see on Sunday morning you don't see, you know, you can jump online and listen. And I'm telling you, it'll bless you. Put it on on a run. Put, put it on where you can write it down, and it'll be a blessing. Amen. God bless you guys tonight as you go, and praise the Lord for a first day of school. Everyone perfect, safe. All right. God bless you. Have a great week. We'll see you Sunday.